while the new Z890 motherboards are barely launching on the market, a lot of people are still down using the Z690 platform. And here I am reviewing the flagship Z790 motherboard from Biostar, the great looking Biostar Z790 Valkyrie, with an interesting design and a more interesting price tag to say the least. This motherboard is one of the few Z790 motherboards that might be a great choice for a high-end gaming system, and today we shall see just how good it is. The Biostar Z790 Valkyrie is the flagship of the well-known brand Biostar. While the new Z890 motherboard and chipset has already been launched, the new series of CPUs that will use the new chipset are prohibitive in terms of pricing and a lot of people will upgrade their aging systems to the Z790 platform. This is where the Biostar Z790 Valkyrie comes into play. For starters, this motherboard has a price tag of no less than 400 US dollars or euros, at least at the time of this review. Now, 400 dollars is a lot of money for just the motherboard, but in the context of the today's market, it's on the same level as other Z790 motherboards. In fact, most flagship Z790 equipped motherboards are over the 400 US dollar mark with ease. And what do you really get for 400 US dollars with this motherboard? Well, for starters, a beefy VRM system, no less than 5 M.2 sockets, including one PCI Express 5.0, a beefy VRM system again, quite large VRM heatsinks, metal reinforced DDR5 RAM slots, and an onboard error display, among other things, such as a power or a reset button on the motherboard itself, dual bias setups, and of course, the RGB implementation. We start with the design. It's nothing fancy, especially when we compare it with the other modern Z790 motherboards. The heatsinks have a brush texture with subtle gold and silver lines on the front parts. This is a departure from the usual RGB filled gamer design that we have seen on modern motherboards. And speaking of the RGB, this motherboard has plenty of it. The main RGB is the Valkyrie logo installed on the VRM heatsink. This will fully synchronize with the rest of the motherboard and system if you are using the RGB headers on the motherboard. You also have some RGB LEDs on the chipset heatsink, but as you can see here, the graphics card covers the entire heatsink. Which should serve as an example of why at least now, chipset heatsinks that have RGB LEDs are a waste of money and time. The highlight of this motherboard has to be the VRM system. It is simply overbuilt and this makes the Biostar Z790 Valkyrie a great motherboard for even i9 series CPUs. This is because the VRM has no less than 20 phases that will handle any CPU throw at it with ease. The controller used on this VRM system is a Renaissance unit model RAA229131. The MOSFETs on this motherboard are made by Renesas as well and have the model number RAA220 these are rated for 105 amps and with a total of 20 on the VRM side, it totals to no less than 2100 amps of power available for the CPU, making this motherboard one of the most capable Z790 boards on the market right now. And now with the rest of the features of this board, it has plenty. For starters, the M.2 sockets for high-speed SSDs. This board has no less than 5 M.2 sockets, but only one of them is truly PCIe 5.0 enabled. The rest are PCIe 4.0 and PCIe 3.0 enabled, and thus with various speed limitations. All these M.2 sockets are covered by thick metal made heatsinks with thermal pads pre applied, but these are not really heatsinks as they have no fins to dissipate the heat effectively. They do some cooling, but it's not the best cooling in the world. However, one great thing about this motherboard is that it has individual heatsinks for each M.2 socket, so it is not an entire monoblock covering everything. This makes installing and working around the M.2 sockets a breeze as you do not have to remove the graphics card to remove the monoblock. Still speaking of the storage options, it has no less than 8 SATA ports, all of them right angle for easier reach of the cables. However, as is the case with all motherboards, if you use any of the M.2 sockets, some of these SATA ports will be disabled by default. It's the nature of the PCIe lanes used by the M.2 sockets and how the SATA storage functionality is divided on the motherboard. Handling of the USB ports is done by a low power Genesis made GL3590 USB controller. This is a configurable USB 3.1 Gen 2 hub controller that not only supports high transfer speeds but also fast charging for your smartphone. The audio side of this motherboard is actually quite good, as it has as its centerpiece the Realtek ALC1220 codec. For filtering, we are looking at Michigan Electrolytic Fine Gold Series capacitors, which are high quality audio capacitors and will last you a long time. The entire audio system is covered by a decorative metal plate and nothing else. 
The internet connectivity is interesting to say the least because for a motherboard of this price and chipset, you'd expect two internet ports, not just one. And this one is linked to my favorite internet controller in the world, the Intel i226V. A controller that has been on the market for no less than three years and since day one has been plagued with errors and random issues. And guess what? It's still not fixed today. The only way to use this controller normally with minimum issues is to make sure that you have one of the latest drivers for it. Otherwise, you will lose your sanity trying to get a stable internet connectivity with this controller. For the Star Z790 Valkyrie, I would have expected two internet controllers, one made by Intel and the other made by Realtek. At least in that configuration, you could use one if the other decided to not work, but you only have the Intel. Speaking of things that used to work but now they do not, this two-digit error display. On other motherboards and on motherboards that have been around since medieval times, this display could be used for two things error codes and real-time CPU temperature. Too bad that the Z790 Valkyrie does not have the real-time CPU temperature functionality enabled. Quite an odd thing to say the least, not having this included in a motherboard with a beefy VRM advertised for CPU overclocking. Next to this two-digit display we have the BIOS toggle switch, which does exactly what it says. It toggles between the active BIOS from the two integrated BIOS chips. Having two BIOS chips is great because if one chip is corrupted, you can just use the other one and fix the corrupted BIOS chip without breaking the entire motherboard. And right next to the switch, we have the two BIOS chips installed, both made by Windbound with the model number 25Q257JVEQ. This motherboard does have a dedicated M.2 E key socket for a Wi-Fi network card and has the antenna cables pre-routed around the VRM heatsink, but the Wi-Fi card is not included, unfortunately. Fortunately though, on the right part of the CPU, next to the SATA ports, we have this small clear BIOS button. This is easy to access and use, which is good, especially since a lot of the motherboards have this switch on the back and on the IO panel, a thing which I do not agree because Given that anyone can press it, it might become dangerous at some point. And now we have the BIOS, and here is where things get uh, worse. Not only does this BIOS have the design of what we have 10 years ago, but it's slow and sometimes unresponsive. I've waited a long time to do this review, hoping that the newer version of this BIOS will sort things out, but it didn't. I've used a no less than three different versions as well of this BIOS, not much has improved apart from general stability. Testing this motherboard though is simple, as we will be using an Intel i7-14700K CPU, a 96GB DDR5 memory kit from Neo Forza running at 6000MHz and an MSI NVIDIA RTX 3090 Supreme graphics card, all powered by a Seasonic Prime 1000W platinum rated power supply. We start our testing with one of, if not the most popular CPU benchmark, Cinebench R20 and Cinebench R23, both updated to the latest version. What is good about this benchmark is that they are free to download, easy to use and will offer a good comparison with other CPUs and system configuration. And in this first test, we can see that the Biostar Z790 Valkyrie is ahead from the Gigabyte Z790 Gaming X by a few points and ahead of the pack in general. However, that is not the same when we look at the Cinebench R23 benchmark. In this case, the Z790 Valkyrie is on the second position behind the Gigabyte, not by a lot, but it still has a lower score in both single and multiple performance. When we talk about the storage, we are going to test the main PCIe 5.0 enabled M.2 socket and for that we are using an Team Group T4 Scardia A440 1TB M.2 SSD, an SSD that is known to be able to offer speeds upwards of 7000 megabytes per second in certain benchmarks. However, we will be using both benchmarks and actual file copy tests to see what the performance of the motherboard is when we talk about the installed storage on it. In Crystal Disk Mark, we see good performance on the Z790 Valkyrie with no less than 7000 megabytes per second for the reading speeds and no less than 5400 megabytes per second for the file copy test. We see all the motherboards being around the same performance but still behind by a few percentages. When we talk about the gaming, we have to use Ghost of Tsushima, updated to the later version and running at maximum settings at 1080p to get more usage out of the CPU. And here, the Z790 Valkyrie is ahead of the pack by a small margin but ahead nonetheless, with a good performance across the board and no dips into the 0. low percent, and that is the case even when there is a lot happening in the game. And we end our testing with Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty, also updated to the latest version and using its maximum settings but still running at 1080p for optimal CPU utilization. And here we are looking at the same level of performance with the Biostar Z790 Valkyrie ahead of the rest of the motherboards, not by a lot but 
it's still a difference in terms of performance. As a wrap for this review, what is the Biostar Z790 Valkyrie as a motherboard? Well, it looks good, having a rather simple design and not over the top like how many motherboards are these days. The RGB is limited too and that can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you want from your motherboard. However, while the performance of this motherboard is good, and that is backed up by the enormous VRM system that it uses, which also has high quality components. There are some issues that need addressing, otherwise this motherboard will be forever a second choice for most people. First issue is the bias. It looks dated and it's slow to respond. Not only that, but sometimes it fails to save the change settings and inverts back to its previous state. Not only that, but even if it does save, the new settings, the first reboot after saving is slow and it's almost like the BIOS cannot configure the new settings for fast enough. This of course can be fixed by a BIOS update and this is why I've been waiting this long to do this review. I kept waiting for BIOS R to release a new BIOS version for this motherboard and they did but it only fixed issues that were down to stability and compatibility with new CPUs and new RAM memories but nothing about the design or slowness of the BIOS. The second issue is linked with the internet controller. Not only is this controller notorious for not being stable, but Biostar did not include the latest drivers that will fix some of the issues for this controller, and thus, your best bet is to go search for the latest drivers for this controller, otherwise, you will experience the worst that this controller has to offer. Speaking of the worst, I still do not understand or approve the decision for this motherboard, a flagship no less, to only have a single LAN port when a lot of the newer motherboards have two with different controllers, and especially at this price point, the lack of a second LAN port and controller is disappointing. The third issue with this motherboard has to be down to the small two-digit display, which is used to display errors and nothing else. While not a major inconvenience, a lot of the even older motherboards would use this two-digit display to display the real-time temperature of the CPU with no software or any user input required. Why is the Z790 Valkyrie lacking this feature that I'm sure could have been patched in via BIOS update is simply beyond me. And thus, is the Z790 Valkyrie a good motherboard? Yes, it is. It has one of the best VRM systems found on a Z790 motherboard, and it is stable when we talk about the general performance. It looks quite good too. The components used on this motherboard are good quality and the price reflects that. And while there are a lot of good things about this motherboard, there are glaring issues that need to be addressed, otherwise many will look the other way to more common Z790 motherboards that are perhaps even cheaper than the Z790 Valkyrie. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of this channel.